Okay, good morning. My name is Colin Crisco, and today I'm going to be talking about the work done by myself and Avery Miller uh, about labeling schemes for deterministic uh, radio multi broadcast. So, first, we'll begin by talking about the radio network model itself, and then we'll discuss the multi broadcast or K broadcast problem and how the labelings fit into that. So the radio network is comprised of a bunch of processors that are all identical and we can't distinguish between any two of them, each of which is equipped with a radio that it can use to transmit messages to some of its uh, neighbors. Now we also assume that the transmissions are symmetric, so when U can transmit a message to V, V can also transmit a message back to U. Now we'll look at some of the uh, examples of these transmissions in the network. Here, the processor W is transmitting and no other processor is. So all of its neighbors receive its message. In the next example, we have two processors, U and W, that are transmitting. So all of their non-transmitting neighbors will receive the message. However, no information uh, crosses the edge between U and W, since neither is listening for the other's uh, transmission. In this last example, we have two processors, U and X, that both have multiple neighbors that are currently transmitting. In this case, we say that a collision has occurred, and because of the interference between the transmissions, neither u nor x will receive a message. Further, we assume that the processors are unable to detect collisions. So when a collision occurs, the processor is unable to distinguish between a collision and complete radio silence. This can be summarized in the following property that says a processor will only receive a message if it is listening for a message, and exactly one of its neighbors is transmitting the message. Finally, we assume that all the processors operate at the same speed, so we can discuss time as occurring in rounds. And in every round, each processor can either be listening for a message or transmitting a message of its own. We can incorporate this into our property by saying that a processor will receive a message in the rth round if and only if it is listening in the rth round and exactly one of its neighbors transmit in the rth round. Now we'll move on to the K broadcast problem. So in the K broadcast problem, there's some subset of processors that each contain some message. And all of these messages must be distributed to the entire network. When all of the processors in the network have a message that must be distributed to all other processors, we call the problem the gossip problem. Our goal is to create an algorithm that will run on the processors and move these source messages throughout the network. All of the processors in the network will be running the same algorithm. Second, the processors run completely independent of each other, and the only communication between them has to occur between uh, the radios, so using the radio. The last assumption that we make is that it's a deterministic algorithm, so of course the processors have no access to any random bits. Now these um, requirements are quite restrictive, and in the next example, we'll show that uh, broadcasting in a radio network is impossible. So here we have the four cycle graph with one source node containing a message. Once this node uh, transmits its message, it will be received by both of its neighbors, 
but both of these neighbors are running the same algorithm. Uh, and they're both deterministic and they can't communicate with each other. So they have to proceed in the same fashion. So if either of these processors transmits, the other one will transmit as well. This causes a collision at the last node called L who can never receive the message. So to solve this problem, we introduce labelings. So a labeling is an assignment of binary uh, strings to the vertices. We say that the length of the labeling is equal to the length of the longest string that it assigns. So in our example here, the length of this labeling lambda is three, since a string of length three is assigned to vertex three. Now by using a labeling, broadcast does become possible. So the labeling that we'll consider assigns one to the source as well as the uh, processor one, and it assigns zero to the other processors. Now the idea here is that the algorithm has access to the labeling and the processors that are assigned a label of one are used to move the message through the network while the other uh, processors are passive and will just wait to receive the message. So this time when the source message, or sorry, when the source processor transmits its message, it will be received by both of its neighbors. However, this time only the processor P1 will relay this message. And so we avoid the collision at that last processor and it does receive the message. And so the broadcast is complete. Now that we've discussed how the radio network model works and what the problem is that we're trying to solve, we'll move into some of our results. So our goal with this work was to attempt to minimize uh, the length of labels that are used uh, to complete the multi-broadcast. And our work can roughly be divided into two separate uh, categories. First, dealing with arbitrary graphs. Here we were able to show that um, O of log K uh, length labels are sufficient to complete uh, K broadcast in any graph, and as well, O of log delta labels are sufficient to complete the K broadcast in any graph. Uh, of course, delta is the maximum degree in the graph. Uh, secondly, we, we show that there are some graphs which require uh, these, this length of labels. Finally, in trees, we show that um, using a distinguishing labeling is both necessary and sufficient to complete the gossiping problem in a tree. So various work has been done in the radio network model uh, and variations of it, as well as uh, on different problems. But the most relevant uh, right now is the work done by Ellen, Gorn, Miller, and Pelk, where they showed that the acknowledged broadcast problem can be completed using labels uh, of a constant size. In the acknowledged broadcast problem, not only does the source message need to be distributed to the rest of the network, but the source has to be informed once the broadcast is complete. Now, this is important for us because a modified version of their algorithm can be used to establish uh, a shared timer uh, amongst all the processors, as well as uh, a shared time at which all the processors know that the broadcast has been completed. And in addition to this, it allows us to determine uh, a unique path from the source to every other vertex. Uh, that can be used to get messages back from that processor to the source. Having a path 
that can get messages back to the source is important for our results. Since most of our algorithms work in a way that we choose some coordinator uh, and we broadcast a message out from there, and then we use this path to get information back to the coordinator, and once all the information is collected there, it can distribute uh, the messages to the rest of the network. So the first results that we'll look at are our results in general graphs. The first one in particular is the individual collect algorithm. This algorithm uses uh, a labeling of length O of log K. So what we do here is we assign a unique uh, label to each of the sources. We choose some coordinator uh, that will perform the uh, EGMP algorithm, the broadcast algorithm, uh, to establish a shared timer as well as find those paths. Once these are found, each of the source, um, each of the processors with some message will use that path to transmit its information back to the, to the coordinator, who can then use the uh, EGMP broadcast algorithm to distribute the, all of these source messages to the rest of the network. So in this example here, uh, once the EGMP algorithm is complete, we can see that the sources are transmitting their message back to the center. And once the center has all of these messages, it will just broadcast out to the network. So the next algorithm we'll look at um, is a round robin algorithm that uses O of log delta uh, bit labels, where uh, delta is, of course, the maximum degree of the graph. Now, this algorithm works by assigning the processors a distance to coloring. So having a distance to coloring ensures that there's enough separation between processors of the same color so that if they transmit in the same round, all of their neighbors will receive uh, their message. We use the EGMP broadcast to again establish this shared timer uh, as well as establish an upper bound on the diameter of the graph. The upper bound on the diameter of the graph is also an upper bound on how far each message needs to travel to get back to the coordinator. So we run D uh, phases where every color is given the opportunity to transmit. Since each color has the opportunity to transmit in each phase, each source message uh, progresses one step closer to that coordinator node. After D rounds, uh, sorry, after D phases, all of the source messages will have collected at the coordinator, who can then rebroadcast them out to the entire network. Again, we have an example of this where we have uh, a partial two coloring. Uh, and in the first round, we can be guaranteed that the source uh, processor here will have an opportunity to transmit its message to its neighbors. And possibly in the same phase, uh, but definitely in the following phase, each of these neighbors will have the opportunity to transmit, which ensures that the message uh, reaches the center. Once the message is at the coordinator, it can just broadcast it out to the rest of the network. Now that we have these two algorithms, uh, of course, one uses log k bit labels and the other using log delta bit labels, we can combine these algorithms uh, to achieve the best of both. Um, now this is simple to do. We use one extra bit of advice that tells uh, the algorithm which strategy it should be using, whether it be the round robin or the individual collect. And in fact, there are some graphs, uh, the complete graph, for example, that requires labelings of these lengths. Now, a natural question to ask is, can we do better? Are there graphs where we can use even smaller labels? 
Uh, and this was what motivated our results for gossiping in trees. So we'll take a look at an example. Uh, this graph here is constructed by attaching paths of length 2, 3, 4, up to some n to a common vertex. Now, to label this graph, we assign a distinct label to the root and to the farthest leaf. The remaining leaves are given another label, and all of the remaining processors are given the last label. Now, the algorithm that we use in this graph transmits an init message from the root, which is relayed by the internal nodes towards the leaf. Once the leaves receive the init message, they will transmit a, a collect message that is again relayed back towards the root. But this time, any processor that contains a message will attach that message to the collect as it passes by. Once the root has received all of the collect messages, it can broadcast the entire package back out to the network. Now in this picture, we have the root beginning the transmission of the init message, which is then relayed uh, by the internal nodes. And we see that the shortest leaf there uh, has received uh, the init, and it now begins to transmit the collect, which makes its way back to the root. And this continues. And all of the collect messages are arriving back at the root at different times, and there are no collisions. And then once the root has all of the messages, they can be broadcast out and everybody becomes informed. Now the key to this algorithm working in this graph is that this graph has no symmetries contained in it. It has a trivial automorphism group. And we see that if we cut down one of these branches by just one, when the root transmits the init message, both of these leaves here will begin the collect message at the same time. And this causes a collision at the root, and the source messages along these branches are never received. So we have too much symmetry here. We have this automorphism that can switch these two branches. So this leads us into the idea of having a distinguishing coloring. So a distinguishing coloring is any coloring of the graph that cannot be preserved by any of the graph's automorphisms. In this example here, we can start by just labeling or coloring all of the uh, vertices in one color. But we see that all of these leaves and the corners of this triangle can be switched, uh, which preserves the labeling. So we have to change those. Once we've changed uh, these to a different color, when we interchange these leaves or these corners, uh, the labeling is no longer preserved. Finally, we have the automorphism that uh, exchanges the two branches with each other. And this we can take care of by labeling one of these internal nodes as a different color. Then the distinguishing number is the smallest number of labels that can be used to trivialize the automorphism group. So with this definition in mind, we came up with the following lower bound. Uh, that is, if any labeling is sufficient to complete gossiping in a tree, then that labeling is also a distinguishing coloring of the graph. Now the intuition here uh, is that when we look at the path between a vertex and its image under an automorphism, if they have the same labeling, then the entire path must behave uh, identically. So if we go back to our example here, the vertices along each of these edges, or sorry, the vertices along each of these branches must act the same. 
And so once we get to the center of that path, because these must act the same, we will always end up with a collision along uh, the, or at the center, which prevents the message from either uh, V or its image from reaching the other. Now we were also able to prove that any distinguishing coloring is sufficient to complete the K broadcast or gossiping in a tree. And so that gives us this, this upper bound of uh, O log uh, DT. Now, the way that this algorithm works is similar to our easy graph algorithm, and the root node will transmit uh, an initialized message out to the leaves, and the leaves will then uh, transmit a, a collect message back towards the root. However, in order to, uh, to avoid collisions, every node uh, transmits an encoding of the subtree uh, contained below it. And as these encodings build up, they're used to map wow. into a series of delay values, and these delay values prevent the collisions. Now that we've talked about some of our results, uh, albeit briefly, we can ask some, some interesting questions. So can our algorithm that uses the distinguishing labeling uh, be extended to uh, provide an algorithm that can be used in all graphs? Or is it that the addition of cycles inherently makes the problem more complex? Another um, interesting question is uh, of performance. So in, in this work that we did, we specifically focused on minimizing the length of the labels uh, without any consideration of how long the algorithm takes to complete. So it would be interesting to see if we can derive lower bounds, uh, not only in terms of completion, but in terms of uh, time to completion. And I guess that's really all I have to say about our work uh, for right now. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope uh, you enjoy watching all the other videos for the conference. Uh, and I hope you have a great day. I hope you can get outside. I hope there's nice weather.